passed by this conservation area quite a few times when I used to work at a park in Concord, Massachusetts, but I've never spent any time exploring it or foraging here, so I figured I'd check it out and bring you guys along. Let's see what we can find. The first delicious thing to eat in the fall are rose hips. And rose hips actually have a seed that uh, was used as a sort of an irritant. There's little hairs on it, and the seed itself has irritating factors. So if you're going to use them, you want the pulp on the outside of it. So people will make jams by boiling it and then straining out the seeds, or they'll chew on it and then spit out the inner part of it. But high in vitamin C, it has some ascorbic acid, and it makes a pretty tasty, almost cherry-like jam. Uh, Rosehip jam is really, really tasty. And the birds love it as well, so you have to compete with them if you find a good, a good patch of rose. And roses are pretty easily identified. They look like a standard hybridized rose, uh, thorns facing down. And they always have these cluster of red berries. The little dot where the flower used to be at the top of them, like on these ones. One plant you could feasibly confuse with, bit, um, with rose hips is bittersweet. And this is the material used for a lot of wreaths in the fall, at least out in New England. And this is Celastris, and members of this family have been used for a memory enhancement. Um, it's good for a circulatory system. But this particular Celastris is a cardiac glycosoid containing plant, so you would not want to take this unless you were taking it with an experienced herbalist or someone who had direct experience with this plant, because it does change the flow of blood in your heart. But good plant to know, beautiful plant for decoration. And similar to rose hips, but it, they have these yellow husks around the, the seeds, and they do not have spines like a rose does. This plant over on the left is a rhododonax, and it's a river reed. And the reeds themselves can be used to make free reed instruments. Uh, bagpipe chanter reeds are sometimes made from a material very similar to this. And also river cane, which is a southern plant, very similar to bamboo, um, is used to make flutes. And I've tried making flutes out of this, but I've had more luck making reeds on the bar bottom portion of the, the nodes. And these really easily identified tops of them, almost like a wheat or something in the grain family. A pretty neat plant. These also have a very small amount of dimethyltryptamine in their roots, as do a lot of wild plants, but that's another another use. It's also present in our brains as well. But good food, and it has a starchy kind of running root that can be used similar to a cattail. And some say it has an anise licorice sort of flavor, but I've, I've never detected that in times I've harvested it. Arendodonax. This rather menacing looking plant is Circium vulgare, or thistle. And the stalks of this, when they're younger, can be cut down and cored. And you eat the core like you would celery. It's kind of a sweet, um, sweet and salty taste. They can also be made into flutes, and I've done that as well. And the seeds, much like milk thistle, have a liver detoxifying property. Uh, it's not sibilarin, which is in milk thistle, but similar constituents. And the floss, sort of puffy part of this, has been used as a filling for pillows and for coats, as well as milkweed. And to the right of that, a very well past Daucus carota, or wild carrot. This is kind of a neat variety of apple. This is a paradise apple, or malice. And we think of apples as the larger hybridized and domesticated counterparts that we have now, but traditionally apples were used not so much for eating, but fermenting. And they would create applejack by fermenting apples and then putting the fermented mush outside with some water. And they'd skim off the portion that freezed, and the rest of it would be very, very highly concentrated alcohol. So Johnny Appleseed was not so much an apple an edible apple plant peddler, but more of an apple alcohol pusher. 
which is a very different story than what's presented to us in our history books. These are edible, but not, not the tastiest of the crab apples. Most crab apples are edible, but are a little bit sweeter after frost. So, this is paradise apple.